You're listening to the Hope Revealed Podcast Network with your host, Matt Crum. The Hope Revealed Podcast Network is home to shows like Hope Revealed, God's Got This Stories, Fight School with co-host and Emmy Award winning director Bill Nolan, on Clubhouse, the new international room called Let's Get Naked and Cancer FU, Fighters United, or his LinkedIn show called Matt Chat Live. Every episode of every show is designed to give you inspiration, motivation, hope, and the tools you need to navigate life successfully at home, business, or career. So now, your host, coach, consultant, and purveyor of hope, Matt Crump. I love that little drum roll right there. It's pretty cool. Hey, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Matt Chat Live. I am Matt. Welcome to Matt Chat Live. And uh, super glad to have you back today. I'm excited about who we have on our show today. My new friend, Isaac. I know you're going to absolutely love uh, him and what he does and what he's able to do for, for folks around the world. We'll talk about that a little bit later. We also have a new sponsor on today's show. Pretty excited to talk to you about that sponsor, MF Consulting. And uh, I'll tell you all about that in a little bit, right? My friend Chris out there in Washington and uh, all kinds of stuff. We got what's coming up tonight. Well, about another a little less than two hours from now on Clubhouse. You can take it all off with us. That's right. We're going to get naked. Let's get naked on Clubhouse, 7 p.m. Eastern tonight. And we've got some friends from around the world that are joining us. I've got some incredible mods from Australia, the UK, of course, the United States. And we're going to have a blast tonight. We've been talking about uh, of late. We were on time management for several weeks. And then uh, last week, we moved into a situation about uh, your marketing and what is too much. You know, when is enough enough? A lot of people talk about that they don't want to hear all kinds of little private stories and things that happen in somebody's life, right? Just get on with it. And then some folks say, no, man, let it all hang out. Tell everybody everything, right? So uh, what's the line? What's it supposed to look like? And uh, we had a fantastic conversation last week. Uh, a new a new friend to the room at Let's Get Naked joined us. She owns an art gallery. And uh, she had an incredible perspective about artistry and our own artistry. And we dug into that all last week, and we're going to continue that conversation today about when is too much too much. All right. So that's tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern uh, in the United States on Let's Get Naked for Clubhouse. That would be 4 p.m. in Pacific time. And for all of my friends in Australia, I'm with you at 9 o'clock in the morning, 9 a.m. It's 7 a.m. If any of you are listening in Australia now, if you're in Australia and you're up at 7 o'clock in the morning hanging out with me, that's that's pretty stinking cool. Thank you. Make, uh, make that little note there in the comment section for we'd love to hear from you. No matter where you're at from today, if you're watching or listening, uh, pop in your name, a little bit about you, say hello, tell us where you're coming from. We'd love to have that. If you're on replay, welcome to the show today. I hope you're going to enjoy it and have a good time because I know I am. All right, so I'm looking at all kinds of stuff that we got planned up for today. So in just a moment, I'm going to bring on my friend Isaac, who is sitting back in the green room right now. He is uh, he's on oxygen right now because he just can't believe that he's here. He's just so excited right now. I can look at. Oh, I see his face in the green room. He's so excited. Can't wait. Can't wait. It's going to be fun. All right. So, uh, man, some of you might have heard over the past uh, past couple of weeks that I have launched a new mastermind. Well, new to you, but to me, I've been working on it for a couple of years and it's called Boomerang DNA. Yep. Boomerang DNA is the name of my new uh, my new mastermind. I can't wait for you all to hear about it and be a part of it. So um, I think I've got a video. Yeah, here it is. So I want to put up a couple of days that might explain a little bit about that for you and to you. So uh, here it goes. Take it away, Matt. Hey, this is Matt Crump. Are you ready to break out of average in your business, your career? For your life boomerang dna is a mastermind that will help you find your true purpose and live it out we'll show you how coming back to your core design well it'll lead you towards breaking the addiction of casual with meaning and complacency that be crushed by purpose you deserve more than just an average life you deserve a life full of meaning fulfillment and passion so let's unlock the code I'm here to help you get there, and you'll have access to everything I do only if you join us for this mastermind called Boomerang DNA. 
where I show you how living authentically to the core, well, it'll change everything. It'll change everything about who you are today, starting right now. In order to join this mastermind, click on the link below, or you can go right to boomerangdna.com, or you can call us at 1-910-228-0459. Again, you can go to boomerangdna.com right now, or call 1-910-228-0459 in order to be one of 10 people enrolling in a Givers Get Mastermind called Boomerang DNA. I'll be talking to you soon. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a home run. See you there. Yeah, it's about that time. I've been talking about this guy. Boy, I sure hope he's good, don't you? Because, I mean, <laughs> to talk about him, he's sitting there thinking about it. He is. He's really cool. You're going to love him. He's joined me on Let's Get Naked uh, maybe once. I think twice. Maybe once. I don't know. Don't tell me in a second. I think it was one time. It felt like forever because he's so awesome. I, I feel like I've known him since he was just a little baby boy. Little weed lad. We won't talk about that, though. So, anyway, my friend Isaac, he uh, has a thing called Mashman Ventures. Cool logo, little MV. It's like Superman, except it's his MV man, right? He's got this big MV thing. Like he's he's got it on today. You'll be able to see it in a, in a moment. But uh, this is that guy right there. Yeah, his name is Isaac Mashman. Chasing the vision with Isaac Mashman. That's the name of his podcast. That's the name of one of the things he does there. So I'm pretty excited to welcome him to the show today. Isaac, thank you, my friend. How's it going? Matt, thank you so much for inviting me on the show. Honored to be here. Matt, I love the intro that you have going on. I need to get something like that from me. Dude, Honestly, looks I'm great. for hire. I'm for hire. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, man. So I'm excited to have you here. I met you on uh, on Clubhouse. Well, virtually mm -hmm. anyway, all audio platform, but I love what you had to say. And we've talked uh, a few times since then. And uh, I'm pretty excited to know who you are and, and what you do. Um, but uh, for those folks that don't know who you are or what you do, why don't you just give us a quick introduction and tell people what that is? Yeah, definitely. Well, thanks again for having me on. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I was raised in a rather, I guess you could say, normal household. Uh, you know, mom raised me with the mentality of go to school, get good grades so we can go to college because we're not going to be able to afford, uh, you know, to send you through school. And so that's pretty much exactly what I did. Um, I was pretty much a straight A student, had one C in my life and that was the end of the world. So I'm not one of those entrepreneurs who can say that I was, you know, not necessarily, you know, like I, I wasn't a DRF student, like I was a straight A student and going into my senior year of high school, uh, I was going through some issues at home and I was confused. I was lost. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, you know, I got accepted into a couple different universities, Florida State University, UCF, and I was very close to getting a full ride scholarship. And, um, at a spur of the moment, I fell into entrepreneurship and business and really recognized that a lot of those tendencies I had growing up, um, there was actually a name for it and it was entrepreneur, you know? And so uh, I jumped straight into business, didn't go to college. And uh, over the past couple of years since graduating in 2018, I've tried six different business ventures, more than six actually, um, in three different years, didn't get far in any of them. And then last year I was finally at this breaking point almost and right in the middle of the pandemic, I was confused, I was lost, stuck up in my head, all of that. And I uh, decided to launch my public relations for Mash Ventures and just put myself up against the wall. Yeah, man, that is su super cool. And you've been able to do quite a few things since then. As a matter of fact, when you did that, you actually got some clients, go figure. And uh, you're able to do a few things now with that as well. So you do uh, you do some work with folks in, uh, in marketing and relations and development. You know, there's all kinds of words that we could use. Mm -hmm. um, but what would be the specific specific thing that you do with Mashman Ventures? I have a focus on personal branding. Uh, you know, it is a public relations firm, so it is defined as such, but a lot of PR firms focus on traditional forms of marketing with companies. And I saw that the way that the market was really moving and transitioning was with personal brands. Now, this is a concept that's been going around literally since the beginning of time. I mean, you think about Jesus, you think about Moses, they all technically had personal brands, but now in this modern time, we finally put a definition to it. And so um, I saw that there was a, a gap in the marketplace, something that was scalable, it was something that would be around. And I also saw that there were a lot of people who were immoral and unethical in it, in the sense of 
buying fake followers and buying all their press and not really building up something that was genuine what? and authentic. More yeah, literally. Technical people out there, there can't yeah, be. No, no, I know. I don't, I don't believe it. Um, and so that's kind of what I do. Uh, I do do some work for companies, but that's not really the main focus. I've been able to do all the work for myself. And so it's like, I do have the skills to where I could help another person with their company. And I actually am working with a few people now, but uh, my main focus is for individuals. Individuals, so more one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm, exactly. And uh, it would be startups, or do you come in to folks that already have something going on and help like uh, reorganize, shuffle things up, and look, do something better and different? Yeah, it's it's for people who have already kind of gotten their brand established. Um, I would love to work with everybody. It's just like you know, you have to have this level of self-respect for your time, and so I've devoted a lot of my time now to developing content, uh, pushing my podcast forward, recording videos, recording training. So it's like these people who are, you know, maybe starting out that can't afford the rates that I would like to charge or that I'm charging with the company, uh, do have a series of content that they can learn. So, you know, if they apply what I teach them there, they'll eventually be able to work with me and come on board, you know, as a, as a client. Um, and so it's more so people who have already kind of established themselves and are moving in the direction to go for some of the bigger, you know, the bigger names. Yeah, no doubt. So, I mean, last I checked, your one-on-one one -on -one rates were like, I think it was, what, $1 million? That's pretty cool. Uh -huh. so, Not quite. <laughs> Not quite. Give <laughs> Not me a couple of years. Yeah, we'll, we'll move that way. I, I don't doubt it. So, uh, tell me a little about what your main, what's your main mojo, man? What's the main thing that really just fires you up that you can't stop thinking about? What's that main thing you want people to hear and feel and experience that comes out of you? Honestly, growth and uh, infinite potential, you know, and I know that that might sound a little bit cliche, but um, looking back over a lot of, you know, the people that I was surrounded with growing up or even back in high school, they always felt like there was a like, glass wall in front of them that they couldn't, you know, overcome that they were stuck in this life that they had to live. And it's like um, I was reading a great book by Price Pritchett called uh, U Squared and it's about quantum leaps in your life. And there's an analogy of a fly. And I actually gave this analogy on, a, on one of the rooms for Let's Get Naked. And the fly is, you know, banging against this glass window trying to get through the window. And if it turned around and it just made a, you know, a quick 180 degree turn, the, the door was wide open. And that's what a lot of people do in life. And I see that there's unlimited potential for us to live up to. And, you know, in a relatively short amount of time, not in a, a bragging way, but it's like I'm consistently amazed with what I have been able to do. And I'm like kind of thrilled now because I'm like, wow, if I've been able to do this, like what can happen in 20 years from now, you know, when I double my age, except now it's just like all devoted to business. So it's super, super exciting. Yeah. That's really awesome, bro. So you have a chance to do all that stuff with what you're doing now. Tell me a little bit about, um, a little bit about your podcast that you have going on. Cause I know that's going to be pretty cool. you got a lot of things that you get to talk about there. I mean, are you uh, mm -hmm. pretty much driving it as a, as a, as a moderator, as a speaker? Are you having guests? What's that look like? Yeah, well, I, it's called Chase the Vision with Isaac Mashman. And I originally launched it back in 2019 underneath an entirely different name. And it was only business focus. And I realized that I was kind of putting myself in this invisible box to where it's like, I'm only focusing on business and I could reach people from all walks of life. You know, you don't have to be an entrepreneur to have a vision. Like anybody could have a vision as a, as a musician, as an artist, as a model, as, you know, an influencer at the end of the day. And so um, it was monologue only. I had a couple guests on at the very beginning. And to be honest, I didn't have the equipment and I didn't have the studio set up. And so I just didn't have any guests on. I was just like, I'm gonna just record the monologues. And uh, I'm to the point now to where I've decided to do a guest every single Friday. And so uh, the premise of that is to have three guests that are relatively larger who might have had success, maybe hit the million dollar marker. You know, they have a couple hundred thousand followers, that sort of thing. And then leave the third week up to somebody who's, you know, on that path and who is you know, progressing forward. And so I just got done recording the second uh, ever interview yesterday with the founders of Popple and they did $2.7 million in sales in 12 months. And so I'm super excited to kind of be reaching out to some more people. And, um, you know, if I could sum it up, it's it's ultimately at the center of all achievement is personal growth. And that's what I really want to, to help people understand, you know, the more you invest in yourself, the more every other area of your life will grow as well. Man. So you just said at the center of of personal achievement is where everybody grows, right? Yeah. I, yeah. So, all right. So I would love to find out what that looks like for you. What's the center of personal achievement in your life? And what do you think that looks like for other people? Before you answer that question, we'll uh, we'll take a quick break, go to our new sponsor for the day. We'll come back. Give you a little second to think about what I just said. You can unpack it for yourself as well. But uh, thanks, folks, for being here for another episode of Matt Chat Live. We'll be right back.
All right, so here I am. I got to get myself framed up right. Here we go. Go this way. Okay, cool now. All right, this is my new little thing I got going on here today. I probably need to sit back further so I don't look like I got a like, big fat head. So some people think I do have a big fat head. I don't have a big fat head. Anyway, my buddy at MF Consulting. What does MF stand for? Yes, and Isaac's doing this whole thing. I got to get framed. Does that look better, Isaac? I think so. That's pretty good. All right. So, man, my friend uh, Isaac, that's Isaac who's coming on next. But Chris Webb, who runs MF Consulting, he's out on the left side of the United States in Washington, up uh, top top left hand corner of the of the United States. And he has an incredible and incredible business. We met through uh, LinkedIn and Clubhouse as well. And he's just a super awesome guy, has a new show on a podcast as well. That's a video and audio. And his main thing is about cutting through the noise. What I really dig about him, like he's not afraid to say it. He's not afraid to go there and share what's on his heart passionately. And uh, you might have a couple of expletives there as well. I mean, just the way it rolls, right? He's trying to be authentic to himself. So I'm looking at his website right now, which you can go to. And uh, let me pop that up here real quick. This is his first time as a sponsor on the show. And I'm going to pop it up here. All right, there's his website. All right, so you go to mfconsultingpc.com. Says you've always done it that way um, is the greatest death statement of a company. Have you ever heard that before? Like, I've, I've always done it this way, or it's always been done that way. And you think that's the way to do it, but it's not really the way things work and not work well. Well, he comes to shake some things up in his business and consulting to really get you to that place where you can experience uh, freedom and change and a new outlook. I mean, there's a lot of times we face so many things with the epi epidemic, with the pandemic, epidemic too, uh, from COVID the past year. And myself, having had several retail and local businesses, um, I don't know how I would have possibly made it through. I would have tried, but it would have been really, really hard to pull some people through the door in certain types of businesses, mom and pop shops and uh, little things with small, smaller items where your high ticket items not, aren't that much, maybe 100, 200 bucks, right? Um, so it's hard to pay all those bills and succeed. And then you feel like you can't do anything. Well, that's when MF Consulting comes through. They have a chance to help you to get through those places, those dark moments, and really find the light in who you are and what you're doing. You might be reforming something altogether. I don't know. You'll find out. You need to contact Chris and find out. That's at mfconsultingpc.com. That is my buddy over there. Oh, we got some comments coming in. That was my buddy over there with MF Consulting. So um, he's having he's having a good time out there on the road. I asked him if he wanted to come on and be part of the show. But he's like, man, I'm on the road. Got done my earbuds. So uh, we'll have him another the time all right so i'm gonna bring back uh i'm bring back ooh, look, chris he's over in that little corner over there now too i've got to take off the other thing hi boom there we are all right so now kind of back to some things we're talking about and by the way chris is awesome so thank you guys for uh, checking him out he's on the road right now and i think he popped in let me see what the comments say right there oh, this says linkedin user you know what's cool about that it's cool that you're on there great to be here but when it says linkedin user a lot of times it means you haven't registered your profile properly on LinkedIn. And there's a couple of things that aren't jiving the right way for LinkedIn to be able to push your information this way. Side note, I happen to be a LinkedIn uh, coach and design guy, right? So I just kind of say a little bit that if that just happens for you, you're not on a show and you're like, why is my stuff not show up the right way? Go to your profile, check it out. There's a few things you probably tweak and it won't ever happen again. Promise you. All right. Side note, right back to the show. Isaac, what was the last question I asked you about? It was about that going to that center of that place. What was that place? Ultimately, achievement, personal growth. That's personal the growth. that that is what I would define it as. You know, um, I wasn't always this way. You know, and when I first got started with all of this, I remember the first time I ever did a live stream on Twitter. I was literally out sitting outside. I remember it to this day. One, I had mosquitoes on me. I was in that Florida heat with the humidity, but I was sweating outside of that, and I was shaking. And it got easier and easier with time. And that was an aspect of personal growth, you know, taking that leap of faith in myself and uh, doing what I needed to do in order to improve the areas of weakness that I had, you know, if I'm bad at sales. OK, well, what can I do to improve my sales skills If I'm bad at graphic design? Well, one, I could either make the choice of getting better at graphic design or take the leap of faith to hire somebody who is better at better than me. And that right there is an aspect of personal growth. And so I believe that that's the same for everybody else. You know, I think that mentorship is huge and finding good mentors is, a, is another thing. You know, anybody can be a mentor, but it's another thing to actually be a quality one. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And I know that um, just from talking with you prior, uh, it was maybe about four years ago or so, you had some shifts that occurred in your own life that kind of led you down this path and direction of where you're where you're at now, where you're living, what you're eating and breathing. Right. Um, 
one, you're, you're a musician as well. You did some stuff with music. So I'm a musician. I want to talk a little bit about music because you had like this record thing going on too. It's kind of cool, but uh, not a musician, but we'll, we'll definitely talk about that. We'll talk about it. He had like a record label. That's what it was. He was trying to do the record label. Um, but we'll get to that in a minute because uh, I mean, you had like Snoop Dogg and stuff like that you were signing, but that was, we'll talk about that in a minute. You know, it's no big deal. Um, all right. So, so what were some of those changes that occurred in your life that you, you saw that, Hey, you know what? I mean, not not too many young people um, that were teenagers or whatever think that they're you know called to be an entrepreneur and gonna just go ahead and try to struggle or try to do whatever they can to make something work. This thing that they don't really know, but they just have to do this mm -hmm. thing. Like, I know I want to do something, but I just I don't know. I just have to do that, right? But um, some folks have a little more clarity than that, a little more drive, a little more understanding. What was that like for you? Was there you just brought up mentor? Was there a mentor there? Was there? a video you saw or a book that you read or something that just clicked for you that said, man, I'm, I, this is what I'm made to do. Well, when I was younger, I was always that kid who was innovative and I was looking for things to do, looking for things to build. And I always had this attitude and mentality of like, I want more. And I'm not saying that in a way out of ego, but it's like, I just always wanted more out of life. I wanted to be the best. I wanted to, you know, improve myself when it comes to stu studying. And I guess, you know, that's something my mom ingrained in me when I was like, study so you can get good grades. And, um, you know, ultimately I decided to take a step back and look at what I was doing and have developed that self-awareness. And I think that self-awareness is a powerful word. I think that it's a word that not many people quite understand. And a lot of people don't break it down. They'll say it because it sounds good, but right. self-awareness is ultimately being able to observe your current situation and look outwardly and see, okay, well, what, aspect of my environment. Do I like what is bad? What is positive? What is good? What can be changed? And that's what I had to do. It wasn't just one specific thing. You know, some people have this one, you know, shining light from the heavens that go goes down on their life. And it was just a series of different events and seeing that, um, you know, observing the people around me, for example, there was a time where when I was out in California, I wasn't surrounded by the best of people. And I had to make the decision to take a step away from everybody and cut my entire friend group out of my life. And that was an example of just something that added on. And now I look back and I'm like, that was one of the best decisions I could have ever made. Um, and so consistent growth, you know, at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you brought up something a moment ago, uh, by the way, Hey, Pollyanna, it's so good to see you here. She just popped on a second ago. I hope you join us at let's get naked a little bit. She's such a cool gal. I can't wait to see her. And uh, Chris made a, a, a statement a minute ago. He's the guy we we're just talking about from MF consulting. The smartest person in the room brings the smartest people to the room. That's a really, really good statement. So when you talked about that personal development place and that place where you're ready to, um, to do some, some self-assessment, mm -hmm. right? You're able to dig into yourself. And you started looking at some of those things that felt like where you're supposed to go. Um, there's always, or there should be, an element of, of truth or an element of, of fact or something that's there as, as a guide to go in that direction. I mean, we could just do whatever we want and just waffle all over the place and just do all mm -hmm. kinds of things and never, never really be productive. Or there's, there's this, this thing, it doesn't have to be completely defined, right? But that does happen a little bit over time. But there's this thing that keeps you focused. So like, was there something that was focusing or you were focusing on in the midst of launching out in those areas for your own life? No, <laughs> there, there wasn't. <laughs> it, was straight, it was straight chaos, man. If I could look back over the past four years, it was chaos. And I don't know what the heck happened at all. Um, you know, I, I look back and I'm like, okay, so I took a trip here. I don't know why I took that flight, but it happened. I don't know where I was sleeping. I just did it. And it was just chaos and, and rolling with the flow. You know, it's like, you know, when you're presented with opportunities, you can do one or two things. You can say no, or you could go with the opportunity. And a lot of people think that, you know, an opportunity that scares them or makes them feel uncomfortable it means that they should run the opposite direction. And I viewed it as all the more reason to go after it. And, you know, there are times where I've, I've taken, you know, one way flights before round trips and not knowing where I was going to sleep. And those all, those all contributed to my growth. And that feeling of being uncomfortable made me more comfortable with who I was as a man and as a, as a businessman, as an individual, because I knew that I was, I would be okay. You know, and I guess you could call that faith. And I don't know at that time, it really wasn't faith in God, but it was more so faith in myself and faith that I would pull through at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Faith is a big deal. Uh, it has to be, you have to have some sort of place where you believe in something bigger than yourself or you're never going to really go anywhere. Um, Cause at the end of the day, we're really not that big. But, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. You took off, you went to Paris, right? I mean, you took off this trip. You did some of these wild, crazy things. You, know, mm -hmm. like, you went there and, and you got to see and experience some things you never saw before. Right. Yep. Yep. So what would it like for you to see some of those, 
those things you never thought like we see these like for example i mean you're a young young guy go to paris they get eiffel tower all the little side shops and people sitting out there drinking their coffee or tea or whatever and mm -hmm. you get there and you find out it's kind of grungy in a lot of places and dirty and you're kind of looking over your shoulder somebody's not going to come you know get you or something like that right some really dark places too that you won't necessarily think that's there when you have mm -hmm. this perception of oh it's so pretty it's paris i can't wait to go i mean did you have some of those moments while you're there for your own life not really. Uh, you know, that that trip was a, definitely an eye opening experience because I'm the first person in my immediate family to ever step foot over the pond, you know, and, and travel internationally like that. And that was a huge accomplishment that it was just again, you know, I flew out there <laughs> for a girl and a crazy story. I'll go into detail another time. But I, I flew what out for a girl. Oh, that's a whole other and story, right? um, yeah, a whole other story I'm not going to go into. But it was a huge learning experience. And it was, you know, the only way that I was getting home was if I closed a client and I'm not even exaggerating. Like it was coming up to between two weeks before I was planning on leaving and where I was staying, it was like, all right, well, I need to find another place. And if I didn't close that client, I would have had to stay there and figure something else out for another couple of weeks or things. And now, you know, it was cool. And, and yes, Paris was nice. I didn't have an opportunity to really explore much of the city. I will say, I thought the Eiffel Tower tower would be bigger than it actually was. I thought it was actually kind of small um, because everything in the movies and everybody in the media hypes it up to be like the biggest thing. And it was a beautiful, you know, tourist attraction and, you know, it has some amazing history, but um, ultimately it just made me realize that people everywhere are people. And, and outside of that language barrier, I can still connect and also have an impact over there. And I have some friends to this day that I still talk to and communicate with who are over there. And it was just, um, yeah, I, I could talk for hours about that. Yeah. And you bring up a great point, man. It's one of the things I was alluding to earlier is that there's things that we, uh, we can perceive that can be really much bigger than they are. Um, and, and opposite side, smaller, right? But um, you go there with an expectation of something, something you mm -hmm. thought, believed of, heard of, you've seen it on movies, you heard people say stuff, so you get there and you're like, oh, that's pretty cool, but I expected it to be bigger. Right? Yeah. It's like, man, that's kind of wild. I can probably climb it. I don't want to, but I think I could, right? I mean, so there's things that no, sometimes- I would. <laughs> oh man, you go for it, buddy. Uh, just have a rope and a hook, please. But uh, yeah, there's some places that we can go to in our lives where we may have a thought that something is too big, um, maybe something that is larger than we expect. And um, if we just do it, if we just go for it, sometimes we get there and find out it's just not mm -hmm. that big. So, I mean, have you found some moments like that in your own life or in some of the lives some, or, of clients that you've dealt with or their businesses? Well, I personally love, um, you know, setting goals that are huge and, and setting these huge expectations. But what I've noticed that I do more than anything is I'll view a problem. And at times I've gotten better with this, but at times uh, I'll have the tendency of viewing the problem as a little bit bigger than it actually is. And it's in the spur of the moment that you kind of have to take a step back and analyze the problem in of itself and see, OK, is this actually a huge deal or is this something that is, you know, maybe a couple quick keystrokes and maybe a couple messages could solve. And uh, I think that's what a lot of people do. You know, something happens, they stub their toe. And the next thing they know, their entire morning's ruined because, you know, they stub their toe and now their coffee's, you know, burnt and all this other craziness. But um, if I could talk about, you know, maybe a bigger expectation, uh, especially with clients and their budgets, you know, a lot of times clients will have a prospective budget and then they'll want you to do all this other work. And it's like, you know, it's like the, the, this is when those memes come into play of like the, the client's budget versus what the client could actually get for the money that they pay. And sometimes you have to kind of over deliver for them. But another side topic, side conversation. <clears throat> yeah, no, that's a lot of things to think of. By the way, this person right here said, hi, Matt, great to be here, was actually a friend of mine on LinkedIn by the name of Ingrid. So Ingrid uh, Sangwa is uh, is saying hello to us. So hello, Ingrid, to you. Thanks for coming here today. And uh, yeah, we need to find out. We talk about that uh, sometime, Ingrid, to go back to check out your profile to see why it's coming up. Like privacy that. settings. It is privacy settings. It comes down to that. So let's uh, let's check that out together and make sure we're on stuff. People know who you are, um, which is important to be seen sometimes, right? Not not about being seen, but when you show up, you want to be able to be seen as showing up. Uh, in life, right? So, all right. So, some folks can get a hold of you uh, primarily. I would say through your website or at LinkedIn. You've got several. You've got shows out there on your podcast mm -hmm. platform. So, what what's the biggest place that uh, I've got your website here? Let me pull that back up again. Do 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 do. Uh, right there we go. Uh, IsaacMashman.com backslash Mashman dash Ventures. That's easy to say, mm -hmm. but you can go to Mashman Ventures and find you there. And a lot of things you're able to do and provide for folks um, that you have a, a pretty expansive website. You got a lot things on there. Um, and then of course your shows, but uh, what would be some of the places that you'd like folks to come find you at and be able to engage with you? 
Yeah, I mean, if you're watching this on LinkedIn, you could just hit that connect button with me. Uh, I'm here. I've been on LinkedIn for the past couple of years now. Uh, I am on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I'm, li I'm literally everywhere. It, when you're in the business of personal branding, you have to make sure that you're everywhere. And so um, I'd love to connect with everybody everywhere. And, and Matt, thank you again for you know this opportunity. And uh, speaking of the website, I am working on building a native website. I have my, my web designer working on that to where I can have a native website for mashadventures.com and steps, stepping steps. That's coming. It's coming. Right, right. Yeah, Everything's yeah. Coming. It just it proves the point. I mean, you're still present. You're still there. And it's just one step at a time. And mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. But I mean, you can get there to the website pretty easy and uh, and find them. And of course, go to LinkedIn, click on the button. And there you are, too. Man, it's so cool to know you, Isaac. I'm super, super glad that I have a chance to know who you are now and have you in my life. And I'm positive that other folks would, would feel the same. You have a lot of things that you can talk about. You're very uh, wise in your years already. You've got tons of information up in that noggin of yours. You've got the um, wrinkles on the forehead to prove it. Yeah, yeah, no <laughs> doubt. A lot of like, oh my gosh, what is this saying? Oh my gosh, right? Um, <laughs> but man, it's, what's a blessing is that you're you're only 18 inches away from helping people. That's from here to here, from your head to your heart, man. And, and what I dig about you is that you have heart in it as well. And those places are what's most important when it comes down to helping people. And that's mm -hmm. exactly what you can do. So, man, I appreciate you coming here to the show. And uh, folks, if you wanted to be able to have somebody that can help you in a situation or circumstance with your business or in your life, um, this guy can help you. There's no doubt. Go to his website, check some things out, gain some perspective. Maybe there's some things he might have in perspective that you've not thought of before. Um, what's really cool about people, especially when you're talking about maybe age differences or somebody, maybe somebody who's 60 years old thinks, I don't know if I'm going to talk to this young guy, Isaac, over there and check him out. Why not? There may be some things about his perspective in life and culture that you don't, you haven't thought of. Um, there may be some things you have blind spots to. And somebody like Isaac would be fantastic for that. So I don't think age matters at all. And I think it's exciting to see that just a few years ago, you had some decisions to make to be able to go where you're going now. And you brought up a minute ago, like, like if you doubled the time that you have right now with what you're doing, and just at half your life, you'd still be a decent young guy and be able to have so many things accomplished. I mean, the, the world lies before you, my friend. I appreciate you uh, digging into that and charging after what's, uh, what you've got called into your life to do. So if there's one thing you could say to somebody as we're getting ready to sign out here today, because really my, my whole mm -hmm. purpose of doing my shows is to reveal hope to people, to show them that there is an opportunity to be able to succeed, even when things feel like it's over, like it's over. Um, but a lot of times it's not. Um, so what might be something you could think of maybe in your own life or experience or something you could share with somebody that might be feeling like, yeah, that's great guys. Fantastic. But I I've tried everything. It's just not seemed to be working. I can't even afford you anyway. So forget it. What could you say to that person? I'd honestly ask a question and I'd have them ask themselves this. Am I listening to myself or am I listening to the influences around me? And that's what I'd leave you with. Mm, yeah, that's really good. Well, guys, thanks so much again for being here for another episode of Matt Chat Live. I come to you every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Lord willing, and the creek don't rise anyway. 5 o'clock Eastern, and that's uh, 7 o'clock in the morning in Australia. And then I've got a show coming up in just under two hours, hour and a half from now on uh, Clubhouse called Let's Get Naked. Now, it's an audio platform for iOS users only. Yeah, sorry, Androids. Your day's coming. But in the meantime, you can go to my uh, LinkedIn profile or go on LinkedIn and just search for the event. But I have an event up there today for Let's Get Naked with today's date. And you can pop in there. It gives you the link to jump in and you can come with us. Now, how about this? Let's say you don't have access to Clubhouse and it's still invite only, right? And you want to come and hang out with me on Let's Get Naked tonight. Have I got news for you. If you are able to contact me in the next hour and you would like to come to Clubhouse and have your own account on Clubhouse, I will hook you up. I will give you an account to Clubhouse, but you got to contact me within the next hour. So you can find me at LinkedIn or you can go to mattcrump.tv, connect with me there, and I will make sure you are there tonight to hang out with us on Let's Get Naked. It's going to be a blast. So thank you again so much, Isaac, for hanging out with us today. And uh, again, folks, if you want to reach Isaac, uh, you can visit him at his website. Just go by his name, IsaacMashman.com. You can go there and find it or just do the full thing I've got right here, which also says Mashman-Ventures. He's an incredible guy, has an incredible platform and great information to share with you. And uh, the sky's the limit. There's a lot of great things ahead and it could be with you and Isaac. So make sure you check him out. Isaac, thanks again for being here on another episode of Matt Chat Live.
Brother, it's my honor. Thanks, bud. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here on the Hope Revealed Podcast Network. If you'd like to find out more information about this episode or learning more about Matt's coaching or consulting services, resources, or booking information he has available, please visit mattcrump.tv. And thank you again for tuning in. And remember, in any dark place or any uncertain moment, right around the corner, there can always be a hope revealed. Thank you.